Welcome. Today we're going to be working with ellipses and hyperbolas centered at HK. So if you have an ellipse and it's centered at HK, uh, you're going to have x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. That is the equation. Uh, the big difference is which one has the bigger denominator? If x has the bigger denominator, it is a horizontal major uh, axis, so it's stretched further horizontally. If y, ha or y has the bigger denominator, then it's vertically stretched, so the major axis will be um, the y axis. If it's centered at hk, this gives you centered at hk, the major vertices are h minus a k, h plus a k. So you're going to have to do that out, do that calculation out. The minor vertices are h k minus b and h k plus b. And then the foci, h minus f k, h plus f k. Um, and you find f the same way you did when it's centered at 0, 0, big denominator minus small denominator square rooted. On the other hand, um, if it's a vertical major axis, it's still centered at hk, but the formulas or the method of finding the major and minor vertices are switched. It's the same thing here, but switched which one is major and minor. Uh, foci, you just say hk minus f, hk plus f. All right. Given all that, let us take a look at the hyperbola when it's centered at hk. Like hyperbola, if it's a horizontal one, the x one is going to be listed first in the subtraction. x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. That's for horizontal. If it's vertical, the y fraction is listed first. The vertices, similar to the ellipse, h minus a k, h plus a k, foci, h minus f k, h plus f k. And again, the same way of finding f in both cases is the square root of the two denominators added together. Here, for the vertices, h comma k minus b, h comma k plus b, foci h comma k minus f, h comma k plus f. Now that we have all that out of the way, Let's find all of these things. Is it an ellipse or hyperbola? Which way it opens, horizontally or vertically? What the center is, the vertices, if it's an ellipse, both major and minor, and the foci. All right, here's my problem. So the first thing I do is, is this addition or subtraction? If it's addition, it's an ellipse. If it's subtraction, it's a hyperbola. Now that we know it's an ellipse, which one has the bigger denominator? That's how you decide whether it's horizontal or vertical. X has the bigger one, so it's horizontal. Next thing. I make a list so that I can quickly get it. Other people will do it, you know, just from memory. But I'm going to list the A, H, B, K. And that way it's quick reference for me. A is going to be opposite what it looked, oh, sorry, A is uh, 100 square rooted, 10. B is 36 squared and 6. H is opposite what it looks like 3. K opposite what it looks like 2. All right. So my center is going to be at 3. 
two. The next thing is to find the major and minor vertices. The major vertices, well, to find that, I have to have, um, let's see, h plus a, h minus a, since x is the uh, bigger denominator. So h is 3 minus 10, oops, 3 minus 10, comma, darn it, 3 minus 10, comma, k, 3 plus 10, comma, k. So now I'm going to simplify that, and that's going to be negative 7, Keep wanting to close that parenthesis too soon. Negative 7, 2, uh, positive 13, 2. There's your major vertices. Your minor vertices, well, it's going to be in the y coordinate spot, so it's going to be 3, comma, 3, comma. And then I'm going to have the k minus b and k plus b. So over here, 3, negative 4, 3, 8. The next thing is foci. F, wait a minute, pick a different color here. F is the big denominator minus small. And so F is eight. Now when I find foci, it's going to be um, in the x-coordinate spot. So it's h3 minus 8k, 3 plus 8k, 2. So the simplified foci is going to be, let's see, that's negative 5, 2, 11, 2. And there are your basic pieces of information here. Uh, this is an ellipse. It's horizontal, center at 3, 2, major vertices negative 7, 2, positive 13, 2, um, minor vertices of 3, negative 4, 3, 8, and foci at negative 5, 2, 11, 2. And there you have it. Let's take a look at another example. All right, you guys give this a try, see what you can do, and then once you unpause it, we can see how you did. All right, this, because it's subtraction alone, tells us this is a hyperbola. And that the hyperbola, because the y is listed first in the subtraction, is vertical. The center is going to be at 3, 2, 3 for x, 2 for y. The vertices, now again we can list a is square root of 16, 4, h is 3, b is 3 square root of 9, and k is 2. So we know that this major vertices are found by taking, um, let's see, h and then k minus b, k plus b. 
So when I simplify that, that is 3 comma negative 1, 3, 5. F, in this case, is found by the square root of the two added together denominators. So it gives you 5. So foci is going to be, again, in the y-coordinate spot. So it's going to be 3 comma 2 plus uh, minus 5. Doesn't matter which one you do first, really. But just to be consistent, 3, 2, plus 5. So foci over here is going to be 3 comma negative 3, 3 comma 7. All right, and there is your basic information. Hyperbola, vertical, center, vertices, foci. We're not going to try to find the asymptotes in this case. I think that's enough for today, um, but uh, you certainly could. Um, off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact method of finding the asymptotes when it's not centered at zero, zero. All right, here we go. Uh, for each, decide if it's an ellipse or hyperbola, which way it opens the center and vertices, etc. All right, give this a try. This is a hyperbola. The center, oh, sorry, it's a horizontal. The center is going to be at negative 5, 1. If you like that, A equals 6, B, sorry, not B yet, H is negative 5, B is 8, and K is 1. I probably should put H and K first, then A and B, but regardless, Let's continue. Uh, the vertices are found by, in this case, the x coordinate is the one I want to put it in. So negative 5 plus 6 comma 1, negative 5 minus 6, 1. I probably should have done that one first. So let's list that one first. Uh, negative 11, 1, and 1, 1. All right, so this one is over here. F is the square root of 36 plus 64, square root of 100, which is 10. So the foci is found by negative 5 minus 10, 1, negative 5 plus 10, 1. That's how you find the foci. So when I simplify it out, negative 15, 1, and positive 5, 1. And there you have it. All right, enough of that. Let's now look at how to rewrite in standard form of an ellipse or hyperbola. Well, first, you, it's going to be helpful to gather the terms that are x's, the terms that have y's, and any constants we want on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 84 for both sides. And as I do that, I'm going to rewrite them, the x's first, then the y's typically, not necessarily always, though. So 16x squared minus 96x plus 4y squared. Actually, let's leave a little gap there. Uh, actually, I don't have to. Plus 4y squared plus 8y equals negative 84. All right, and I'll show you why I don't have to. So in this example, uh, You'll notice that the squared terms are both positive coefficients. So that leads us to know that this is an ellipse. 
If one of these squared terms is negative, you'll want to list the negative one second, not first. All right, so, so if x squared was a negative 16, I'd want that set of x's over here and the y's over here. In this case, the next step in the process is to factor out the coefficient of the x squared term for the x's and the y squared term for the y's, y squared coefficient. So 16 parentheses, x squared minus, is that 6? Yes, minus 6x. I'm going to leave a little gap here. Plus, I'm going to factor out the 4, and now I have y squared plus 2y. Again, a little gap equals negative 84. Now, there's a good reason to leave these gaps, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to complete the square by adding something squared here, and for this one, adding something squared here. Notice it's adding something squared, not multiplying something. Now, to balance that, I have to add 16 times whatever I add squared here to this side, 16 parentheses squared, and I'm going to add 4 times whatever I'm squaring here, 4 parentheses squared. The thing I'm squaring is half of this coefficient without the sign, or absolute value. Here, half of 2 is 1, so I'm adding 1 squared times 4. What this does for me is now I can write this as a binomial squared, so it's 16 times x being x squared x, sine of the middle term, thing being squared, squared, plus 4, y from the y squared, sine of the middle term, 1 squared equals. Now over here, negative 84, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 16 is 144, and 4 times 1 squared is 1, 4. All right. When I add 144 and 4, and then a negative 84, I get 64. Now, to finish off this transformation, I need to get rid of that 64 and turn it into a 1. Well, I can't subtract 64. That's not going to, uh, 63 rather. That would give me a 1, but it's not going to do what I want. I have to divide everything by 64. The 16 and 64 are going to reduce x minus 3 squared over 4. And the 4 and 64 reduce y plus 1 squared over 16 equals 1. There is my equation of an ellipse in standard form. Let's see if you can do the next one. All right, in this one, the y squared term is negative, has a negative coefficient, so I am going to make sure it is listed second in the grouping. So x squared minus 2x, I'm going to leave a gap because I don't have a coefficient here. Uh, well, I'll just write it out, minus y squared minus 4y, and then I'm going to add 4 to both sides equals 4. Now I will rewrite it. Uh, x squared minus 2x, parenthesis, I'm going to leave the gap. This, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. And that gives me y squared plus 4y, gap, equals 4. I'm going to be adding something squared here and here, 
and balance it. Now, I'm going to add 1 times parentheses squared for the first one. And this is a negative 1, so minus 1 squared, uh, 1 times something squared. Now, what am I adding squared here? Half of the 2 without the sign, half of the 4 without the sign. So I end up with x minus 1 squared minus y plus 2 squared equals. Now, I've got 4, 1, and negative 4. That makes 1. Now, if you really want to, you can always put these over 1 so that you can still have the visual look of a fraction, but it's not necessary. This is a hyperbola. Now, this is centered at 1, negative 2, and we can continue finding vertices and foci and all the rest. All right. Give this one a try. See if you can find whether this is a hyperbola, an ellipse, and put it in standard form. All right, here we go. 4x squared plus 24x minus y squared plus 4y equals negative 28, because I subtracted 28 from both sides. I need to factor out a 4 here. x squared plus 6x, gap. Factor out a negative 1 here. y squared minus 4y, gap. Negative 28. I'm going to be adding something squared here and here. And I have to add 4 times something squared for the first parenthesis and negative 1 times something squared for the second parenthesis. I'm going to add half of 6 is 3, half of 4 is 2, 3, 2. That's where those numbers come from. So this is going to be 4 parentheses x uh, plus 3 squared minus parentheses y minus 2 squared equals. This is 4 that I'm subtracting. This is 9 times 4 is 36. And negative 28. When I combine that together, that's going to be a positive 4. Now, I can't leave it like that. I need to make that a 1. So I have to divide by 4. That's going to give me a final answer of x plus 3 squared over 1 minus y minus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. And there is my hyperbola. All right, I've got a couple more. I want to, uh, one more? Let's see, I'm not sure which number I'm on. All right, do I have another one after that? No, I just have one more. Give this one a try, see what you can do. 4x squared minus 24x plus 9y squared plus 18y equals negative 9. Subtracting 9. All right. Factor out of 4. x squared minus 6x, parentheses, a gap there, plus 9 factored out y squared plus 2y, gap, equals negative 9. All right, I'm going to add something squared here and here. And I'm going to add 4 times something squared, 9 times something squared. 3 gets squared here, 1 here. Not a very good 3. That's better. All right. So 4 parentheses x minus 3 squared 
plus 9 parentheses y plus 1 squared equals, this is 9 total, this is 36, and negative 9 is going to give me 36. I can finish this off by dividing everything by 36. These reduce x minus 3 squared over 9 plus y plus 1 squared over 4 equals 1. There you have your equation of an ellipse in standard form. Have a great day.